Hello again, I am Blunty. This is my brand new arcade stick. I like it quite a lot. I built it myself from about 65 bucks worth of off-the-shelf parts and you can build your own. You don't even need any fancy electronics knowledge or anything like that. It's ridiculously easy to put together, so let's talk you through it. So let's rewind slightly. A few weeks ago I made this, the world's most powerful Atari 2600 video. YouTube's algorithm didn't like the video much, so maybe you didn't see it. But basically I crammed a full power desktop gaming PC into an Atari 2600 and made it play 30 years actually a little bit over 30 years when you think about it, worth of gaming's most classic systems and titles from my own gaming history. It was a tribute to my life as a gamer. And I'm really quite proud of how it came out, I've got to be honest with you. If you haven't seen the video, check it out. I didn't mention it in the video, which focused mainly on home console type stuff, but it also included MAME titles, arcade titles. MAME, M-A-M-E, stands for Multi Arcade Machine Emulator. It faithfully emulates decades worth of arcade games, another large part of my youth, from back before arcades were bastardized into claw games and prize ticket machines and skee-ball and crap like that. Back in the good old days, if you will. And given that it did that, I also started thinking about making an arcade controller. I mean, these games were designed with this control system in mind, and the D-pad on modern systems controllers, these days regulated only to occasional quick jabs for a quick inventory or special ability kind of stuff, can be a literal pain to use for many of these games. And the analog thumbstick, forget about it, it just doesn't feel anywhere close to precise enough for these games, which relied on a big digital joystick. And of course, with Mortal Kombat 11 hitting us right now, I figured, now's the time. Get it done. Get it done in time for MK11. Now, there's a lot of choice out there for arcade sticks, off-the-shelf kind of stuff. And many of these off-the-shelf products are decent enough for most people on their home consoles and whatnot. But I wanted something that felt like the sticks I grew up on. And the fact is, most of these modern decks that you buy off the shelf right now have the quiet but disgustingly mushy Japanese-style Sanwa switches, or at least a close clone of the Sanwa switches. And frankly, the joysticks are often of lesser build quality and frequently far too sloppy for my taste. I prefer a heavier spring in mine. These off-the-shelf control decks are also pretty damn expensive for what they actually are, mainly because they don't sell in nearly the quantity that would make mass manufacturing of them cheaper because of economy of scale, of course. So I started looking around online to see what parts and prices were out there these days for arcade control components, and I came across a couple of Amazon listings for a cheap and easy way in. The first was a pre-cut acrylic arcade control panel and box. The layout was basically exactly what I had planned anyway, a classic six-button arc with two buttons up top for coin credits and player start. And for about 25 bucks, it was hard to argue towards DIY from Ply or MDF, especially when I'd have to buy the tools to cut and work that stuff as well, because I don't have those tools anymore. They're long gone, years ago, lost in an interstate move. So. I took a chance on what I suspected would be a rather cheaply made but serviceable item. Next, I spotted a listing for a full kit of parts, less than 30 bucks for a stick, 10 buttons, all the cabling, and a USB joystick encoder. So, why not? I mean, worst case scenario here is it's a bit of crap, and I have a cautionary tale to tell you folks, and I'm out. 30 bucks. Alright, let's stop for a moment and take a little bit of a side tangent and talk about buttons. Now, there are a few different types of arcade buttons you can get, but mostly they come down to kind of something like this one or something like this one. This is my preference, but let's start here. This, uh, I don't know whether the camera's going to pick up it or not. Yeah, kind of just. You can see there, Sanwa. These are the most common type of buttons you'll find in today's arcade sticks that you buy off the shelf, basically. Uh, either these or clones of them, like this one here. And I hate these. They are mushy. They have no tactile feel when the click actually happens or any. It's just, I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. They're super light activation, and that's why sort of competitive players like them, so they're quite responsive and everything, but the feel of them, especially for classic arcade games, is just garbage in my opinion. This right here is a Sanwa clone. It looks very, very much like the Sanwa, but it is not a Sanwa, slightly different button and everything. This is a slightly heavier button press, and there are versions of a Sanwa that have a slightly heavier button press, but again, there's no there's no click, there's no feel to it. You can press about there and feel when it acti you know, hits the button top, but the activation force, there's nothing there. There's, it's just mushy. It's smushy and mushy, and I hate it. This. This is where it's at. This is what's called a HAP-style button, H-A-P-P, often called the dimple top because, again, I don't know whether the camera's picking that up properly, but it's concave, 
This is convex button top, so they're dimpled on the top, dimple top. These ones are much longer as you can see. These are designed to snap into perspex or metal uh, to uh, panel tops. And these ones are designed to screw into MDF and plywood and things like that, but also will, you know, you can screw all the way up and get into thin panels as well. But these are the buttons that basically ruled the Australian arcades when I was coming on up and I love the feel of these. It's kind of like the difference between a, a smooshy, mushy, crappy laptop keyboard with membrane keys on it and an actual mechanical keyboard. I'll put these up to the mic so you can hear them. Here's the uh, Senwa. Here's the dimple top. These have a long spring in them so that the activation force is a lot heavier and you get different sort of weights of springs you can put in there to customize if you like with some of these. Um, and a little horizontal micro switch there that sort of clips in and out so you can replace the switch on these really easily as well, which I've always liked. But the activation force is much heavier and you get a very, very tactile click and thunk from it. it like I said, it feels like very much the difference between using a crappy little $20 membrane keyboard and using a fancy smancy gaming keyboard with mechanical switches in it. I like these a lot better. They're a lot noisier, a lot heavier. Um, you know, the professional players these days on your Mortal Kombat's and your Street Fighters might prefer these because of the light activation force, highly responsive and stuff. But for proper arcade gaming, for classic arcade gaming, nothing beats this in my opinion. However, this is the switch that came with the kit that I bought. It is Sanwa in style, as you can see, but let me bring it up to the mic. As you can hear, it's a very, very much clickier uh, button. It feels like the activation force is a lot lighter than this, but it's still much heavier than the Sanwa style ones, um, and that you get still get that lovely, lovely click. Um, a little bit smaller for my taste. I like a bigger button, but uh, the feel of it is a, you know, if I have to compromise, and I do have to compromise, because the reason I'm talking about these is this, as you can see here, the, the micro switch sort of bottoms out it's, it's too tall. Uh, the plan was to just keep these aside and use these with all the other electronics and the stick and everything that came with that. Um, but I couldn't, so I had to, had to use these. And it turns out they're not actually so bad after all. I was expecting these to be mushy Sanwa style ones, but yeah, well, I still prefer these ones and I may do a rebuild of this in a custom deck and everything, make it tall enough to fit these in uh, as a future project because it's fun to dick around with that kind of stuff. These are actually quite acceptable for now. I also snatched up a $12 kit for some light up coin and player buttons. Now these are a smaller diameter fitting than the standard regular action buttons on arcade decks and the panel cutout does allow for this. The two ones up top are designed for this smaller fitting. So, you've been watching the assembly process as I waffle on here and go into close-ups of other bits and pieces, and as you've been seeing, everything goes together extremely easily. No experience with electronics and such is really needed. For me, it went together in like 15, 20 minutes max, I think. For you, if you've never done this before, it might take you a little longer to, you know, study the wiring diagram a bit more carefully, but yeah. I may have done this a couple of times throughout the decade, so yeah, it snapped together like Lego, basically. Although I did have to replace the spade connectors for the coin and player switches. They were larger than the ones that came pre-fitted on the cable looms supplied with the other buttons, but that's ludicrously easy to do as well. And with the encoder that was supplied having built-in support for two lit buttons already, there was nothing more to modify. I didn't have to find a power line or anything like that. You just plug it straight in and away it goes. Job done. So a few final thoughts. I Like I said, like I've been talking about, I love the feel of this. It's a little bit sloppier than I tend to like. I like a very sort of action-y thing, but it is also a little bit heavier in spring action than some of the Japanese style sticks. Again, kind of like the difference between the Sanwa buttons we were talking about. The, the Japanese sticks tend to be quite soft and, and it just doesn't feel right. And this, you know, this is a regional thing. Australian arcades had, you know, the dimple tops and sort of more heavier joysticks and things, and this is a little bit lighter than I prefer, but still a damn sight better than some I've tried, uh, especially in this kind of price range as well. My light up, actually my light up buttons aren't lighting up. Hey buttons, light up for me. Uh, there we go. Sorry, I've got this attached to a USB power bank at the moment, so I can have them lit up on camera for you there. But obviously they're not drawing enough power for the power bank to go, hey, I've got something connected, so they keep turning off. Um, but yeah, the, there's not as much flex in the deck as I expected. Just a little cheapo, you know, Perspex deck. I expected this to flex a lot more, but it's actually quite solid. Um, it does just, it's a magnet for grease and fingerprints and stuff like that. So I may pull this apart and cover this with a vinyl of some kind to make it look nicer and, and, and sort of keep it cleaner and things like that. But that's easy enough to do as well. But yeah, all in all, I'm, I'm really quite impressed with what I thought was going to be a 
real cheap and nasty little, I mean, you can get little exposed screws and things down here and you can clean that up, but you never see those when you're actually using it. And while you're using it, it's good size, good feel, nice and light. The buttons are, you know, I, I like the buttons a little more twerked than this, but not, not nothing that I can't sort of adapt to. But yeah, there you go. About 65 bucks worth of parts, better than what you'll get off the shelf pre-built for 65 bucks, I expect. Um, but not as good as sort of doing something from absolute scratch using a full-on keyboard encoder and a whole bunch of these and custom layouts. No, it's not quite as satisfying as a true DIY build it yourself. And I speak with some experience in that in my uh, early 20s, I designed and built my very own arcade cabinet, my full-size arcade cabinet, big four player thing. It was awesome and it was huge and it was so big I had to make the control panel removable otherwise it wouldn't go through a door. Um, but yeah, uh, compared to that project, this was, you know, like an hour's worth of work total, beginning to, from, from opening the box to plugging it in and start playing a game, as opposed to the arcade cabinet, which was many, many, many weeks of uh, a lot of work and design and thought and things like that. But that was totally worth it. But yeah, if all you want is a really acceptable, perfectly acceptable, better than acceptable, arcade joystick for your classic arcade gaming fun, there you go. Links in the down below, of course, if you do want to give this a go. You can buy the same parts that I've used here, or you can mix and match your own choices and things like that. So, uh, and you can get these in different color combinations and crap like that, but yeah. And, you know, the, the, the ball top here is a standard threaded ball top. So if you want to get a fancier, different ball top or something like that, you can swap that out. You can swap that out for one of the uh, baton style tops. If you don't like the ball tops, you can go one of the lozenge, what are the baton stuff? What do they call this? I, I keep forgetting. They were never in Australian arcades much. The blobby ones. Don't like the blobby ones. I like the ball ones. So you can just hook under there and just give it a wrench. You can't really do that with the blobby ones. Get the balls, not the blobs. My, my final advice. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.